good morning friends so today again we have gathered here just to finish the last part of the first chapter so till now we have just covered the many more concepts regarding the first topic that is the structures of material and today we will just complete the last concept few concepts of this particular topic so first of all in the last lecture we have completed about the sleep and twinning effect so before that we have seen how the plastic deformation is takes place and this particular lecture we will just try to accomplish the terms related to the sleep and the twinning so first of all when we are just go with the concept of the sleep when the forces are acting on any kind of that structure so basically those atoms are just trying to deviate from its original position so in this particular lecture we will just try to resolve so which kind of that forces are acting on a slip in a crystalline single crystals and we will try to resolve those applied stresses onto a slip system so this particular lecture first in the first part we will just try to cover about the resolving applied stresses of the slip system and then we will just go with the concept that is the last concept of plastic deformation in polycrystalline structure so first of all the dislocation moves in a particular slip system in response to a shear stresses applied so basically when the dislocations is occurs so on that particular region the shear stresses are applied so how those shear stresses are resolved into the slip system that particular part we will just try to cover then those resolved shear stresses that is tau r that is denoted by the symbol tau r which is required to produce a plastic deformation so whatever the shear stress that should be a required here to produce the plastic deformation so already we have covered that particular concept what is the plastic deformation and what is the elastic deformation in the last lecture so the shear stresses are responsible just to produce a plastic deformation so it results from the application of single sorry simple tensile stress that is sigma so basically this is all related to the tensile stress sigma now those critical result shear stresses tau crss that is crss that indicates the those result shear stresses critical result shear stresses and then we will just see what is that schemed law the formulation of the schemed law so before going for this we just try to understand this particular diagram so here whatever may be the particular structure that has been shown over here and let us consider this is a crystal subject one of the subject or object and it just having the tensile load f which is acting on this particular position and exactly opposite to this so this will be a shear force oh sorry this will be a tensile force f which is acting what is the meaning of tensile force that part you have covered in the i think engineering mechanics so basically the tensile force is nothing but the forces which are acting in equal and opposite direction and acting on the axis so those forces are called as an it is equal and opposite and acting on the center of that particular object which is called as an tensile force or tensile load so basically the direction which is opposite to each other then the tensile force may be resolved into the two directions one normal to the slip plane and the other in the slip plane so these forces are resolved into the two directions so first is 
this is along the slip direction and second one we have just drawn the normal to this particular slip plate so for this slip plate this will be along the slip direction and second normal to the slip plane so the normal in the sense what what is the meaning of normal that is to the slip direction we are just making the perpendicular angle so when we are just drawing the perpendicular angle that is called as a normal so the result forces in this particular slip plane is of shear type so whatever may be this result forces are there this will be a like a shear type so this will be create the shear effect on this particular crystal structure so if the angle of the slip plane with the tensile axis is alpha and the area of slip plane in the crystal will be this so that is the area will be a a cos y so here after understanding this particular structure we will just go with the next part so first of all what will be the area of slip plane plane that is a divided by cos phi so how the area will be calculated just see slip plane so here it will be an area related to this particular plane so it will be a, a into cos sorry a divided by cos phi because the cos phi will be equal to what that is the adjacent side divided by the hypotenuse so from that this will be a, a surface whatever the plane will be there this will be a plane a and this will be considered as an area a upon cos phi so the load acting on the slip plane that is related to the slip plane okay so that will be a f into cos this will be a lambda so f into cos lambda cos lambda is what so cos lambda again it will be a what is that it will be a adjacent side divided by the hypotenuse so from that we can be able to say f into cos lambda so basically the result shear stresses that is written by the equation f that is load acting divided by area any stress is nothing but what that is the load upon the area so what is the load acting that equation we have found out from that particular previous diagram okay or that structure so here again you can be able to see that particular structure so it will be a f into cos lambda divided by a upon cos phi so by resolving this we are getting f upon a into cos lambda into cos phi so basically f upon a is nothing but here in this particular case f upon a force upon again this particular a is the area so that is nothing but the sigma that is the tensile stress so the resolved critical stress that is tau r is equal to sigma that is nothing but the tensile stress into cos phi into cos lambda so this will be the equation so what is the schematic schemic law that is we have to take this tensile stress below this that is nothing but shear stress upon tensile stress we are getting this particular factor that is the cos lambda into cos phi so this cos lambda and cos phi it will be nothing but the m that is the schemic factor so this will be the schemic law so this is just related to how those forces has been resolved by the shear stresses so when we just want to calculate the shear stress how those particular forces has been resolved that has been shown over here now tau crrs cr ss what is that particular cr yes system that is the critically resolved shear stresses so critical in the sense the maximum direction how that forces has been resolved so for that purpose we need the value maximum value over here so it will be a sigma y into cos phi into cos lambda into or uh, it will be a maximum value for that so basically if in the at the beginning if the lambda is more than 45 degree then lambda decreases and the value of t cr is s as given in the equation previous equation it will be increases so when this 
is a higher than P resolve or that tau r the plastic deformation starts and it will be continued even at the lower stress. So this phenomena basically is called a geometrical softening. So this is related to when phi will be more than 45 degree but when the phi will be less than 45 degree that particular concept that geometrical hardening. So this is mainly depends on the composition and the temperature. So here we can be able to see how the single crystal structure has been gets disturbed. So these are the slip blanks which is shown over here and the slip planes. So basically this will be a direction of forces. This will be a slip plane. In the last diagram we have just resolved this particular slip plane into the two forces. One towards the slip direction and second will, will be the was the normal to this particular surface and those forces are considered as a shear part for this. So here we can be able to see the slip bands how this particular structure has been created or has been gets dislocated. So in this again when whenever the slip is not possible whatever the deformation will be there that creates a deformed portion grain which is just a mirror image of the rest of the parent grain. So this will be create the mirror image and that is that particular effect is called as a twinning which is we have come seen in that particular last lecture. So this is the twin plane. Suppose if it is the polished surface here we can be able to see the reflections for the twin plane. This will be some sort of that complicated structure. Again this particular plane will be called as a twin plane. So twin type are basically the two types that is the mechanical twin and annealing twin. So basically for the mechanical twins, the two structures are there that is the BCC that is nothing but the body centered cubic structure and hexagonally closed pack structure. For the annealing twin, face centered cubic structure it is there. Now the comparison of the slip and twinning. So basically slip it is orientation across the slip plane is the same for the twin orientation across the twin plane is different. So the orientation effect for the slip plane it is same along the plane but the orientation effect for the twin along the plane it is different. So atomic moments are equal to the atomic distances. Here the atomic moments are lesser than the atomic distances. Then atoms are <coughs> moving in only one plane. Here the atoms are moving in all the planes in the region of twin. That is we have seen over there in the structure. So basically this takes place in a millisecond but the twin it is very quicker than the slip effect and it takes place in less than the microseconds. So in the slip it takes place at a low strain rate it requires a high strain rate. Basically for the slip there is no any sound is created but for the twin a click sound it is created when the structure will be gets disturbed. So this is all about the basically related to the slip and twin how that shear effect has been considered that we have seen. Now the last part in this particular lecture that is the plastic deformation of polycrystalline material. So basically the deformation and the slip is more complex in the polycrystalline material. Basically when we just talk about the polycrystalline material the mechanism of the plastic deformation of polycrystalline material is very similar to the mechanism of the plastic deformation of single structure or single crystal. So basically we have seen up to up till now that is related to the single crystal but the, when the poly crystals are there basically the plastic deformation is similar 
but the deformation and the slip is more complex there are some reasons for that and because of this the random crystallography orientation of the numerous grains and the effect of neighboring atom the direction of slip varies from one grain to another so here this particular structure is having the multiple crystals and that's why in the single crystal the whatever the slip it is there that is the direction will not be vary but here because of that neighboring atom it will be tries to constrain the moments or the deformation so that particular one atom is putting the forces on the another one and that's why the direction of the slips it will be vary from one grain to another so these materials are made up of the number of small crystals or grains so basically the polycrystalline material it is made up of the number of small crystals or grain for each crystal slip occurs along the slip system that has the most favorable orientation so basically here for each crystal the slip occurs along the slip system now during the deformation each individual grain is constrained to some degree in a shape it may be assumed by the neighboring grain so it is very important line or it is very important sentence just try to understand it during the deformation each individual grain is constrained so what is the meaning of that whatever the individual grain it is there it is having the constrained some degree in a shape constrained in the sense what it cannot be able to freely deform and why that constraint are there because the neighboring grain is putting some sort of that force on that particular grain and it will be tries to constrain its deformation so prior to the deformation the grain are equiaxist so after the deformation the grain becomes the elongated along the direction in which slip was extended so basically when the specimen has been get extended along that particular direction all those grains will be elongated the dislocation motion occurs along the slip system with the favorable orientation that is the highest result of shear stress so the grain boundaries exerts a repulsive force on the successive dislocations coming down the slip plane so here this particular structure it you can be able to clear through this so before whatever may be the crystal structure it is there and after applying some sort of that forces how that crystal structure will be there so but the deformation basically in this particular structure is not like a deformation in the single crystal structure so the slip direction for that single crystal it is equal in all manner but the slip directions for every grain it is different in the polycrystalline material so the grain boundaries diminishes dislocation mobility the polycrystalline materials are stronger than the single crystal definitely the polycrystalline material it is stronger because every grain is tries to oppose the movement so that's why the plastic deformation is very difficult to achieve in the polycrystalline material so the larger plastic deformation correspond to the elongation of the grains along the direction of applied stresses so the deformation of polycrystalline grain is the uniform manner causing voids and overlaps which is shown over here in this two diagrams and basically it will be introduced by the ashby in 1970 so when the crystal is surrounded by the other crystal of different crystallography orientation the deformation of the crystal cannot start at the primary system as the strain taking place need place needs to be compatible with the strain and the boundaries in on the other crystal so which will be delay the deformation in polycrystalline structure so in simple manner i just want to explain that it is since the plastic deformation of single grain is restrained by its neighboring grain 
and a polycrystalline material will have an intrinsically greater resistance to the plastic flow than would be a single crystal. So sim in the simple manner, just try to understand in the single crystal, the plastic deformation takes place very easy because there is no any other grain to oppose the deformation. All that slip system having the equal direction and that's why the plastic deformation takes place very easy in the single crystal but in case of the polycrystalline material the every grain is trying to oppose the moment of the another grain and that's why it is very difficult to achieve the plastic deformation or it will be create the resistance to make the plastic flow in case of polycrystalline material. So this is all about the first chapter. We will just take an overview of even in the two minutes what we have seen in the topic number one. And after this particular topic, you have to complete the MCQ type of assignment and as well as the few questions which was there in the Batu University examinations that you have to finish. So basically this first we have started this particular topic. We have seen the crystal structure that is simple cubic, face centered cubic, body centered cubic, hexagonally closed pack structure, then 14 previous lattice patterns we have covered in this particular topic. After that, we have seen about the average number of atoms per unit cell and atomic packing factor for various above structures. Then we have seen about the Miller indices that is the indexing of lattice plane and direction. Then we have covered the different defects in the crystal that is called as an imperfections in the crystals. Then we have seen about the plastic deformation. In that particular concept, we have covered about the slip and twinning effect. Then we have just covered the plastic deformation in polycrystalline material. So this is basically all about the first chapter. I think you have just understood what is the basic structures of those particular mechanism. And now, after this, we will just go with the second topic in the next lecture. So thank you very much for the patience and listening. And you just complete your assignments with a very proper timing, which is very important. Thank you.